Okay, so we're going to talk about a few different topics in this next lesson. Um, a few of them are very short, so I've kind of put them together. So last lesson, we looked at static electricity and our first type of interaction between materials, which was friction. So the second type of interaction we're going to look at today is something called charging by contact, or this is also known as charging by conduction. Okay, we're going to look at electric discharge and then electrostatic generators is just a little short um, item at the end of this. Okay, so first of all, when we're looking at a charged object, um, it's very difficult to know if an object is charged or not. Okay, so the study, the branch of science that actually looks at the study of static electricity is known as electrostatics. Okay, so there's obviously not... Not really a ton of, um, obviously current electricity is much more common because it's used in a lot of everyday materials, but static electricity is actually used for quite a few different types of material that you may or may not know. So for example, um, static electricity is used for the way that they put paint onto a car, onto metal. It's used for uh, looking at how photocopiers are working. So Xerox um, the company Xerox has a lot of different electrostatic engineers that actually look at the development for new types of photocopying machines. So even though it's not as common of a branch of science than you're, you may or may not know, there is still people who are looking at static electricity and ways that we can develop it. So um, anyways, there's been an instrument that's been developed in order to know if something has a charge or not. And that instrument is called an electroscope. So this is an example of one here, and we'll look at another one in a few um, minutes here. But an electroscope is basically a material that is used to see if there is something has a charge or not. And it uses very simple products. So you need to have um, a component of it that's made out of a conductor, which is a metal, or uh, and then there's also a component that's made up of an insulator, which could be glass or plastic. So the first electroscope was invented a long, long time ago um, in France, uh, 1848 by Jean Nolet. Um, and uh, we still use it today. So even in science class, you know, you'll see us use electroscopes. So a modern electroscope uh, is a very similar idea to what the older electroscopes were, but you need a component made of metal and then a component made of non-metals. So here you have, I'll kind of circle everything that is made out of metal. So up at the top, there is a metal knob. So it kind of looks like a metal circle or a sphere. And it's connected to a metal rod. Okay, basically, it's like a thin, long piece of metal. Okay, so metal knob, metal rod. At the very end of the metal rod, there are metal leaves. Okay, most of the time, these are made of aluminum foil. Okay, so basically you need a piece of metal that is very thin, thin, thin. Think of like how thin aluminum foil is. And they kind of just hang off of this metal rod. So you have a metal knob, a metal rod, and then the two, they call them leaves, but essentially they're thin pieces of metal made of aluminum. Okay, now on the outside, the outside is made of insulating material. So notice rubber and glass. So usually you have some sort of insulating material that's holding the rod in place. And the outside of this metal container is made up of usually glass or plastic. Okay. The reason why is we don't want anything touching that metal piece onto the ground. So imagine this is sitting on a desktop. Okay, the reason why, and we'll look at it later on, if a metal conductor is touching the ground, what will happen is the electrons actually are able to flow directly into the ground instead of staying on that metal piece. So we want the electrons to stay inside of this material, which is why we have an insulating material around. This will make more sense once we look at examples of how we use this, okay? Okay. So, um, how does this work? So, the charge that is on a rod usually is brought close to an electroscope. 
It's probably wondering, well, how does an electroscope tell us if there's a charge or not? It actually has to do with these metal leaves. If the metal leaves, so imagine this is the rod. If the metal leaves are hanging straight down, so imagine this is the metal rod here, and the leaves are attached to it. If they are hanging straight down, that means that the object has no charge, okay? If the metal leaves, so imagine the same thing, if they are spread apart, what that means is this is now charged, okay? So if the leaves are apart, so these metal leaves, so this picture is actually showing them apart. If they are apart, that tells us, okay, we have a charge. If the metal leaves are hanging down, that means there is no charge. So it's kind of something that we can look at and say, oh, well, the leaves are apart. We know that there's a charge on here. So something has happened to this electroscope to create a charge. All right, so if we were to look here, so if you take a look at this picture, this picture is showing that the leaves, so it's just a different um, diagram here, but here's the metal sphere, here's the metal rod, and here are those leaves. And this is glass with a rubber stopper, right? But if you can see here, the leaves are apart. It's because if you look at the charge down here at the leaves, it's showing that they have a positive charge. So why do positive and positive push the leaves apart? It's because like charges repel. And that's what we saw in that last video. Ooh, there should be a little E. So like charges repel, opposite charges attract. That is a big idea here for you to keep in mind. So the greater the charge, the greater the separation of the leaves. So if the leaves are only a little bit apart, that means you only have a small charge. The further apart the leaves go, the more of a charge that that electroscope has on it. Okay? So we're going to come back to the electroscope and, and start using it in different examples. But I just want to explain like how that works about the leaves and about um, the setup of it. So charging an object. So here we're looking at interactions that we had talked about before. Okay, so there are four ways that objects can interact each other to create a charge. Friction is what we looked at in our last lesson. We have three more to discuss. So today we're going to look at charge by contact, and then we're going to look at these later on in the chapter, okay? So charge by contact is also known as charge by conduction. So all together, there are four ways that objects can interact to create a charge. So one we've looked at today, we're going to have another check mark off here, and we'll look at induction later on. Okay, so charge by contact, remember this is also known as charge by conduction, same thing. So charge by contact is different from friction, okay? Friction means that you are taking two objects and you are rubbing them together to create a charge. Charge by contact means that you are simply touching an object, and that's the key. So it's not a rubbing, it's not like the balloon rubbing against the sweater, it is a touch. So you can charge a neutral object by contacting it with a charged object. So I can take something that is neutral, right? If I were to touch it, let's say I have a negative object here. So a negative object and a neutral object. I can touch this negative object onto this neutral object this will create a charge. Okay, and we'll look at an example. But remember, this is not rubbing. This is just a touch. So it's different from friction. Okay, so here's an example charge by contact. I'll also put a video up uh, on D2L to have you see this in motion. Okay, so this is just a static picture. So we have, we're starting off with a neutral object and a negative object. When the negative object comes close, you have to imagine in here, you have positives and negatives, right? This is neutral, neutral. This guy here is negative. When the negative object comes close, but it is not touching yet, think of the balloon. Remember how we had the, the wall and then the balloon, right? The negative balloon. 
If you bring the negative balloon close to this wall, you remember from the last time, the last lesson, the negatives that are in the wall will actually push away from this negative balloon because like charges repel. The same thing happens here. In this neutral object, the negative electrons are moving as far away as possible from this negative object, right? So what's happening here is we are not changing this yet. So notice this is still neutral. But what you're doing is you're creating a separation. So this side of the sphere is like negative and this side is positive because the negatives that used to be here are being pushed away. So then we have it touching. So here it was close to it. Here it actually touches. So what happens is electrons will jump from where there is an excess of electrons to where there is not an excess. So this rod was negatively charged. This sphere used to be neutral. So this rod had more electrons than it needed. So some electrons will actually jump onto this sphere. Okay. Part of why it is also jumping onto this sphere is because the portion of the sphere that is close to the rod has a positive charge. So what happens is the negative electrons are attracted to it. So electrons will jump on. So after the rod has touched this sphere, we now have both objects being negative. Okay, so this is an important note, important note here. Whatever, when you're doing charge by contact, whatever the object is that you are touching the neutral one with, that is the charge that it will actually become. So if I take a negative rod and touch a neutral object, the object will become negative because electrons will jump onto that sphere. If this was a positive rod, the opposite would happen. Electrons would actually go onto the rod and you would end up with a positive sphere. We'll see that in a later example, okay? So charging by contact, the neutral object gains the same type of charge as the object that touched it. So that's what I was mentioning. So if we touch a neutral electroscope with a negative rod, the electroscope will become negative. Because what happens here, this negative rod, when it comes close, the electrons that are in this electroscope will push down because it's repelled by this. So what ends up happening is electrons will jump onto the electroscope because this knob here is positive. So what ends up happening is this electroscope gained electrons, right, gained electrons, so overall it's going to be negative, right? If we were to look at the opposite, where we have a positive rod instead, so the electroscope is neutral right now, we have a positive rod. All of the electrons in this electroscope are going to be attracted to this positive rod. Remember that opposites attract. So if you have a positive rod, electrons are going to be attracted. The negative rod, they were repelling. So what ends up happening is when this touches the rod, electrons are going to be gained onto the rod. So the electroscope is going to lose electrons because the electrons went onto the rod. So you touched it with a positive rod, the electroscope became positive. So the charge that the object gets is always the same as whatever the charges of the rod that you use to touch it with. 